Okay, um, so I didn't watch Marin's before this because I'm on a timeline. Malia's getting me up and ready. Anyways, she's got places she's got to go. Sound like anybody? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Okay, so anyways, um, Mosiah chapter 7, verses 1 through 15. And basically, Mosiah is just a compilation of histories, you know, uh, Limhi's people histories, Alma the Elder's histories, just the, the histories of what's going on with these other groups and then the bringing of them together. And so in the first 15 verses of Mosiah 7 is basically, um, you know, Mosiah's had peace for a while, but everybody's kind of wondering about this group that went off. What was it? Zenith? Why can I not find his name? Anyways. Uh, Limhi is the king that they find, but he's the grandson of Zenith the Explorer. Pretty sure it's Zenith. Um, anyways. And so Ammon, a strong and mighty man, not the later Ammon, he goes, they wander in the wilderness for 40 days trying to find these people, and he finds them, but King Limhi throws them in jail for two days because they're under the bondage of the Lamanites. They are the remnant people of King Noah, and uh, King Noah has taxed, not Noah, the Lamanites have taxed them greatly. And I found it interesting right here in 15 it says um Limhi says after he finds out who Ammon is and his people he's so happy he's like gather the people together we're gonna rejoice I'm so happy you guys should rejoice because our brethren will deliver us out of bondage or out of the hands of the Lamanites and we will be their slaves for it is better that we will be their slaves, that we will be slaves to the Nephites, than to pay tribute to the king of the Lamanites. And I found that interesting, mainly because, mainly because they're like, they're like, we can't, we'll be slaves. All right, we'll be your slaves. Get us out of here. This place is horrible. Horrible. I'll, I'll be your slave. I'll do whatever you say. Just get me out of here. Okay? And, you know, that's kind of kind of parallel to what might be going on in the world today about our freedoms being taken and possibly our taxes being raised or whatever. Money being taken out to um, fund Nancy Pelosi's ice cream addiction. Anyways... <laughs> back on the spiritual train. Um, they say, I'd, I'd rather have, I'd rather be slaves to our brethren than to be subject to the Lamanites. And I think that's a, an interesting parallel that we need to, or that we can, um, think a little bit deeper on, um, as we go about our lives. What, what, let me phrase this better. What are we subject to that we would say, I'll be your slave to be out of this? I'm not saying it right, but you know what I mean? You know, like, what are those things that are holding us back that we're just metaphorically dying to be, you know, willing to become slaves to be released from? Um, if we, uh, whether we admit it or not. You know, what are those things that are holding us back? Um, anyways, that's all I got. It was basically just a brief history. Um, in the book, it talks about the scattering and gathering. Um, basically, it's the, it's the Lord's pattern. He scatters, he, um, Lehi and his family flee to freedom. Then... Basically, a few years later, Nephi and his followers 
flee to freedom. And then, you know, a couple decades after that, Mosiah is warned, the first Mosiah is warned to flee to freedom. And then they come upon the people of Zarahemla who are warned to flee to freedom. And they stumbled upon uh, the last of the Jaredites who was warned to flee to freedom. And so it's kind of um, a pattern. You know, he doesn't say, stay and fight. He says, get thee out. Go on. Um, so, there was one thing. Oh, yeah. It is a chronic pattern described once again by the ancient prophet historian for the benefit of modern reader. Sin and depravity lead to bondage. Repentance and righteous obedience lead to liberty. So that's that's what I got today. And um, that's all. All right. Bye.